Hello again, this is Stan Roach, Chief Customer Officer of AgileIron, and welcome to AgileIron's tutorial video number 7.2, covering the integration of the AgileIron Suite and the Intuit QuickBooks. We have broken this subject down into three separate steps, and each step has its own video. This video, number 7.2, is on step two, and is entitled, The Macro Setup for Integration. This video is a bit shorter, and it takes about nine minutes. At the end of step one in 7.1, we had just completed the formal introduction of the two software programs, QuickBooks and the Agile Iron Suite, and had just finished importing the basic QuickBooks setup information into Agile Iron. Your screen should now be displaying all the imported entities that have just come into Agile Iron from your QuickBooks company file in the cloud. The import from the QuickBooks company file has brought the following items in company information, chart of accounts, item list, payment methods, shipping methods, tax categories, and sales tax authorities. We will now spend a few minutes looking at how you can control and customize the flow of information from Agile Iron into QuickBooks so the two systems are aligned and reflect your preferences. You have the flexibility to map entities in Agile Iron to the equivalent ones in QuickBooks. So by way of example, a payment method defined in Agile Iron can be mapped to one in your QuickBooks company file. What this does is provide you complete control over the way information is transferred between Agilar and QuickBooks so you end up with the representation and the granularity that you would like to see in QuickBooks for your accounting and reporting purposes. We will now go into the settings sections. Below is the list of the various mappings that can be made and we will look at each one of these now. Company information, GL accounts, bank accounts, payment methods, shipping methods, tax authority, adjustments, QuickBooks configuration, and product form mapping. Let's start with the company information. We see that this has been set up with the information from the QuickBooks company file import, so this doesn't need anything. Now let's look at the GL accounts. Once again, all these have been set up based on the chart of accounts in the QuickBooks company file, and nothing additional needs to be done here. Now let's look at the bank accounts. Once again, all these have been set up based on the chart of accounts in the QuickBooks company file, and nothing additional needs to be done here. Looking at the payment methods, here is the list of payment methods used in Agile Iron. This list can be further extended with methods that are specific to your business. For each payment method, you can select which QuickBooks payment method it maps to whenever a transaction with this payment method is exported into QuickBooks. So, for example, we will obviously map cash in Agile Iron to cash in QuickBooks, but we might also choose to map the COD payment method in Agile Iron to cash in QuickBooks. There's also a deposit account field here, which allows you to select which bank account the income received from a particular payment method gets posted to when the transaction is exported into QuickBooks. So, for example, you can specify that funds received into Agile Iron from the cash payment method be deposited into the bank deposit account called undeposited funds. There are two important things to note here. First, just note that this mapping I'm showing you here provides you a lot of flexibility and total control on how activities and entities are exported from Agile Iron into QuickBooks. And second, you should note that all of these mappings come with logical default settings, so you only need to edit those that you want to adjust the default settings of. Similarly, for shipping methods, one can map the various shipping methods in Agile Iron to the appropriate one in QuickBooks, but they are already mapped by default to the logical ones here in QuickBooks. Next, let's look at the sales tax rates and authorities. These were automatically imported from your QuickBooks company file and will be used in Agile Iron. If these have been set up the way you need them, for example, rates for various jurisdictions where different rates apply, out of state, wholesale, non-taxable, then no changes will need to be made here either. 
Next we will look at inventory adjustments. The Agile Iron Suite comes with a set of typical inventory adjustments. In the Premier Edition and higher you can add custom adjustment reasons that are specific to your business if you like. Here for each of the adjustment reasons you can map each reason to the expense account or income account from your chart of accounts that these adjustments should be recorded under. Next, let's look at the product form. This is the form that will contain information for each product you have in the Agile Iron Suite. If you click on New Product and scroll down just a bit, you will find that there is an accounting information panel that allows you to define for each product how the transactions with this product as a line item are treated as that transaction goes into QuickBooks. This includes the income account, cost of goods sold account, inventory asset account, QuickBooks item. Each of these drop-downs are populated with a filtered list based on the import from your QuickBooks company file. There are two important things to note here with regards to the QuickBooks items. First, it is not necessary to map every individual product in the Agile Iron Suite to an individual item in QuickBooks. You only really need to have QuickBooks items that give you the level of granularity from an accounting or reporting perspective that you require. Many of our customers choose to create category level items in QuickBooks and map all products within a category into that same QuickBooks item. By doing this, you don't unnecessarily overload QuickBooks with a level of detail and data that isn't needed for accounting and financial reporting purposes. All the operational details are available and reportable from the Agile Iron Suite. This can also greatly extend the usable life of QuickBooks for you. And second, the list of QuickBooks items displayed for selection are of the accounting type non-inventory part, items from your QuickBooks company file. This ensures that you are not tracking inventory in both places, in both the Agile Iron Suite and QuickBooks and prevents duplicate journal entries related to cost of goods sold and inventory assets. Finally and quickly I will show you the tab under Settings, QuickBooks, Configuration where you can set preferences for how you synchronize between Agile Iron and your QuickBooks company file in the cloud. There are a variety of parameters here that govern the behavior of the Agile Iron QuickBooks sync. As before, the important thing is that each of these parameters already have good and sensible default settings. But if you would like to modify them, they are here and you can easily refer to the user guide for details on each of these control parameters. That ends Step 2 and the short video 7.2 on the macro integration. You just have one last very important step three to take with video 7.3 which is entitled Mapping the Detailed Components of Transactions. This is critical because it shows you how sales orders, purchase orders, and sales returns flow between Agile Iron and QuickBooks and it only takes about nine minutes. Then you will have graduated and you will be an expert on this subject. So buckle up and start video 7.3.